heaven, all gifts come from you. And please help us to use these in a way that makes you happy. Amen. Amen. This morning's scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 23 through 27. And that will be 824 in your pew Bible or 1662 in the large print. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Always, Renee, thank you. It's good to have you in the program. What I thought I might do for the remainder of the summer is, at least in part, to talk about some of the way, ways we do things in this particular fellowship. And they're all subject to change, and, and we, we do that change quite often. But particularly, I want to talk about um, today about passing the peace and perhaps lighting the candles and explains why we, why we have certain things. I think it could be kind of fun, and to give a, a biblical and theological background for it. But today, I want to provide an answer, a, a beginning answer to be sure, of why we, along with countless other fellowships throughout the world, as a matter of fact, why we share the peace of Christ with each other every Sunday. What, what is this? Is it a mere convention? Is it, is it a mere formality? Is it, is it something to make us feel good? Or as one commentator said, which I kind of liked, he said, you know, when I grew up with this in my church, um, I was always embarrassed for myself because I don't like to say hi to people, and I was always embarrassed for people uh, for per who perhaps had come for the first time, and then all of a sudden strangers were coming up to them and shaking their hands. And, and I, that resonates with me because when I worship in another church, I and it's just the way I am, I kind of like to be left alone. I, I, I enjoy being left alone. And, and uh, okay, so why do we share uh, the peace of Christ? What's the background behind that? And uh, at least, I don't want to say in theory, because for me it's in truth, what is happening when we uh, approach someone and say, may the peace of Christ be with you. Now, it may seem as an unlikely beginning to answer this question, but I think the beginning is to spend a moment with the uh, uh, ancient practice of issuing blessings and curses. Because in, in the Old Testament in particular, but certainly um, Throughout the world, as a matter of fact, in the ancient Near East during the time of Christ, and certainly to 3,000 years before that, and no doubt throughout the history of humankind, and certainly even into the present in certain locales, um, there is a ongoing practice in, in the potency of um, uh, curses and blessings. In other words, that what we say does have power. And sometimes that power um, and, and the words that you issue for, they cannot be taken back. And the effect that they have is effective um, for a very long time, if not forever. In other words, that what we speak 
does have potency, and particularly it becomes high octane potency when associated um, with the power of the gods or with the power of the spirits and their attendant gods. Whether you believe in gods and spirits and uh, goblins or whatever, nonetheless, that's the background, some of the theory behind this. Now, on the negative side of the idea of blessings and curses, and they do go together. On the negative side of blessings and curses, of course, is the curse itself. And perhaps the best known uh, curse in scripture is the curse of Cain. And I was rereading this, and it's kind of fascinating if, if I've read this correctly, and I would encourage you to go back to the, what is that, the third chapter, maybe? Yes, I think so, of Genesis. If you read it carefully, God doesn't curse Cain. Somewhere else he is cursed by some other power, um, by some demon of sorts. I'm not, I'm not sure. But nonetheless, Cain, after murdering his brother Abel, is cursed. And the result being uh, is a life of hard work and restless wandering. A life of that, that's the curse that is put on him. There's also a curse put on people who try to rebuild Jericho after it has been devastated. And the person who tries to rebuild Jericho is eventually done in. And of course, those of you who know about uh, a little bit of history, when King Tut's mind was uh, uncovered, what was the guy, Carter, wasn't that his name, uh, who uncovered it, there was the curse of King Tut. And there are all sorts of people who apparently, or maybe, or perhaps, or didn't die of uh, uh, a result of this curse that was put on King Tut's tomb. Regardless of that, in any, uh, in any sense, then the curse has the power to transform a human being uh, into some kind of a life of what would be misery. And unless there's correct, the correct potion or there's a, some kind of an offer of forgiveness or something, then that curse is affected for a very long time, if not forever. And again, there are various... Uh, and numerous examples of curses in the biblical narrative. And uh, suffice it to say, uh, some people believed in their danger and were somewhat careful to avoid being recipients of such odious malediction. Now it seems to, we, to me we moderns uh, find this talk uh, a bunch of hocus pocus and, and out of the plausible realm of scientific verification. Um, but call it a curse or not, have we not all been damaged, even to this day, uh, by hate-filled words poured out upon us, perhaps when we were young, uh, or maybe even later? I'd like to give examples, but I, I'll give one, but it'll be non-specific, so I don't want anybody to think that I'm talking about, because I don't know. But we know that if a parent raises a kid and says you're a dummy, and you're not going to amount to anything, that child is cursed forever. 